My name is Stevie and I like to write songs. This is part two of creating a progressive metal song using the Phrygian dominant mode. If you would like to see the series from the start, the link will be in the description. Today we'll tidy up some of the stuff we did last week and try and work on the chorus. Let's go. Right, so last week we recorded two verses. They're both identical, so we only really need to listen to one of them just to get a feel for where we're at so far. It's getting harder every I have a comment from one of my viewers. I think he does have a valid point here. When we have the keyboard line here at the very end, it's just solo the keyboard and the vocals. At the very end there, the keyboards and the vocals are playing in unison. Now, I never would have thought of that vocal line if I hadn't played it first on the keyboards as part of the history of how the song was written. But yes, I think that's probably right now that the vocals are doing that. We should try maybe changing the keyboard part to harmonize with the vocals instead. So let's see what alternatives there are for me to do. I think it's pretty obvious now to me as well, now that it's been pointed out to me, that it's this very last note of the synth line just pokes out. It just doesn't seem to be placed correctly. Okay, so we have a few alternatives here. We're, we're in a C major chord at that moment. So obviously we've got this, which is the fifth. We could try doing the one. It's a bit tidier. Let's try the third. Yeah, maybe the third is the best. I don't think it should be just left hanging there. Maybe we need to add an extra note. I'm not 100% on it. Do you know what? I'll leave it as it is and have a think about it and experiment. Let's move on to the chorus. So in listening to what we have so far, I think the guitars are very staccato and busy. And I think a nice compromise to come after that would be something more sustainy and chordal. This is what I came up with. Playing a straightforward major triad. And using the chords that sound really well in Phrygian Dominant, which would be the one chord. The flat second. And the seventh chord, which is a minor. I really like this thing, sort of sustaining that note over the top of the chord and resolving to there, so. And then maybe end on the major. Okay, so try and put that together. This would be a simpler section, I think, maybe just sustained power chords. Let's try it. Mm -hmm. 
So I did my usual thing. I played this new rough round and round and round on a loop and tried to work out what I was going to sing over the top of it. And I ended up writing these meaningless lyrics. The more I thought about them, the more I thought that their meaningless was kind of cool. And I can't really think of anything better to put on. This cursed axis, the cusp or the falter, I'm sort of thinking axis is like being at a crossroads and you're either on the cusp of something new or you're about to fall apart and falter. So I thought it was, I thought it was like a good line that I came, that came about just because of the sound of the words. And then a smile for the guillotine really made me think of these stories about, for example, in the French Revolution, when the aristocracy were all being taken to the guillotine, they were all very concerned with doing it in a dignified way, which I thought was a good metaphor for this idea in the song that we're thinking about mortality, that as this person is metastasizing and necrotizing, that they're preoccupied with the idea of facing it with dignity, a smile for the guillotine, the crux at the altar, I'm not really sure what that means. It's obviously just a, a rhyming word. And I think it's meaningless, kind of makes it appear to be possibly deeper than what it actually is. I'll try and put those lyrics down now. Okay, so we're back at the keyboard because when I started trying to record those lyrics, the, the vocal melody didn't turn out the way I hoped. It's just sort of a bit low and a bit out of the range of my vocals. I still like this part. But this part, it starts way down too low and I didn't really like it. So I started trying to sing maybe a harmony that would be more in my vocal range and more comfortable for me to play. So I basically inverted the chord. Okay, so there's a lot more emphasis on the major third on it as well, which I think sounds like a nice upluft from the verses. So let's try and get that recorded now. I'm absolutely going to want some backing vocals in this, but let's have a listen to where we are so far. Right, I really love the way um, at the start there, the whole band stops just in time to let the vocals breathe in before it starts again. Let's hear that again. <laughs> it's nice. Okay, let's try and work out a vocal harmony for it. Okay, let's get a bit more context now and see how it flows from the previous section. You can already hear from the little drum fill that I put on the end that I've got something planned for the next section. But let's stay on this section for now. I kind of thought that that new section that we're working on needed a bit of detail, a bit of sparkle added to it. So I thought of maybe adding a clean guitar sound. When I was trying to write the riff for it, I ended up 
coming up with two different riffs. So the first one is... And the second one is... And I couldn't decide which one to use. And then when I was setting up for recording, I set up a left and right channel and thought, why not just play one on the left channel and play the other on the right channel? And I've experimented with that and I think it sounds pretty cool. So I'm going to put it down like that. It's just a, a tiny detail in the background that you probably only hear if you were listening carefully on headphones. But it just adds a bit of depth to um, an otherwise very straightforward section in the song. Right, let's have a listen to that on the track. Right, it's not a chorus, is it? I just don't get that vibe that it is a chorus. So I think what we've just written is a pre-chorus. And the chorus is going to come now. You remember last week I said that one of the things that's interesting about Phrygian Dominant is that it always has, you always have to be careful of what harmonies you use because there's a tendency for it to modulate into C minor. I think maybe this is the moment now where we could finally modulate into C minor for the chorus. And it'll hopefully have a kind of a bizarre sound because it'll sound uplifting, but it'll still be minor. Compared to Phrygian Dominant, it is a happier sound, even though it's minor. That's what I'm sort of hoping for. And let's see what we can come up with for the chorus. I think we'll try and approach things a wee bit back to front now for writing the chorus. Normally, I have some kind of musical idea, but not always. Sometimes it starts off with a lyrical idea, and this time it has started with a lyrical idea. Because we were talking about a smile for the guillotine, and talking about how maybe that represents some kind of metaphor about how you're going to face death with dignity. And I thought maybe in the chorus we could disagree with that that that's what you would like to do, but the reality falls short of that. The line keeps running about my, in my head, in the wasteland of my dignity. So I think we'll use that as the sort of starting point for writing lyrics for the chorus, and then we'll use those lyrics to try and write some music around. It doesn't sound like the first line, in the wasteland of my dignity, but it sort of sets up a kind of a rhythm or a sentence in the something, in the something that rhymes with dignity, and then in the wasteland of my dignity. Dignity is a hard word to find a rhyme for, but in the rhyming dictionary I found infinity. And I thought, in the shadow of infinity. We sort of set up an imaginary place here, in the shadow of infinity, in the wasteland of my dignity. So it can see something coming, see something like this black fog from the verses. Something is coming in the distance. I can see in my periphery. That's got a nice rhyme with infinity and dignity. In the shadow of infinity, in the wasteland of my dignity, I can see in my periphery. It's taking hold of every part of me. Nice. I like it. Still don't think we've reached the chorus because we do need some kind of line that would be the seminal line in the song. Maybe the line that we take our title for the song out of. So we maybe need to go around another four. It's taking hold of every part of me like a, some kind of simile, like a, a blood stain in the sea, or like an, an oil slick that's infecting everything in the ocean, a red stain on an endless sea. I keep getting a visual imagery about a crucifixion, about being like a, a sacrificial we did use the word altar earlier on, like some kind of sacrificial lamb. 
But I want to steer clear of religious imagery. I wonder are there any words analogous to crucifixion or sacrifice or something like that? I'll look it up and I'll come back. Right, so it did find something, the killing tree, which of course rhymes with sea, so it's a nice but we need some extra syllables. A red stain on an endless sea. Da 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 killing tree. A debt paid to the killing tree. That's really cool. I thought I was gonna to have to write eight lines, but I think that's it. I think the killing tree is the title for the song. In the shadow of infinity, in the wasteland of my dignity, I can see in my periphery, it's taking hold of every part of me. A red stain on an endless sea, a debt paid to the killing tree. Cool, I like it. Let's see if we can write a chord sequence or a rough or something for this. Right, I've just realized I keep saying that it's gonna modulate into C minor, but what I actually mean is F minor because we're in C already. So that's the modulation that we're going to make. We're trying to come up with a melody and a chord sequence, and I think something like this is going to work for me. Sorry. So the melody I'm thinking of is something like this. And then major. That'll bring us back around full circle. Now the nice thing about that is I think I can sing a perfect third over the top of it as well for the backing vocals. So that works. Right, so how I hear that is just the big power chords. It's got a nice callback to the thing that we were doing earlier on, where the... The sort of appoggiatura thing of having a note that's outside the chord and then resolving into the chord. We see the same thing here. Here. So it feels like it flows on from it because it still keeps that appoggiatura kind of resolving from outside the chord into the chord. Let's record the guitars and bass for it and see what, see what it sounds like.
right, let's hear that. Right, it sounds a wee bit empty. We need something else to decorate it. Either some keyboard parts or some lead guitar parts. I'm going to get the guitar and I'm going to try and play along with it and see what ideas I can come up with. Yeah, something like that might be nice. That's it, I think. That's it. Let's do that. Right, let's hear where we are so far. Okay, cool. Um, I think maybe that lead line, we could pick that up by with some strings or the mono synth or something like that there. I set up an electric piano there a second ago. I wonder what that sounds like for it. That sounds really nice. I'm not going to try and play that on the speed. I'm just going to step record it in.
Okay, cool. Let's have a listen to that. I think maybe some staccato strings might be nice as well, playing along with that. I think I'll try adding in these short strings from Spitfire. These are free strings, but they sound pretty cool. They sound like this. You could probably just copy what we've just done onto this as well. Let's have a listen to them together first. And it resolves back into the F minor again, which is not where the second verse starts. So we will need some kind of segue that brings us into the second verse. And maybe that could be the intro rough. Maybe we'll do the intro rough in F minor, and then we'll return to the intro rough in F minor. And then we can modulate back to C for the, for the second verse. So we'll leave it as it stands right now. I think we'll do that next week. And we can try and copy all this across now and see what it sounds like on the second verse. You know what? I had an idea there now that maybe maybe the pre-chorus is a bit long-winded and maybe we should only use it for the first chorus. And let's try and experiment and see what it would sound like if we take that out completely and just go straight into the chorus the second time around. Yes, I like it. That's it. Right, let's save everything. Okay, so I think that was a good day's work. I'm pretty happy with that chorus. Let's get a listen to the whole thing from the start now and hear where we are. Next week, I think there's probably going to be two more episodes. There, next week, we'll try and write an intro riff. And we'll let that intro riff work as a segue between the chorus and verse 2. Maybe some kind of outro as well. And then in the final episode, we'll devote the entire episode to the guitar solo because I think this song requires a really epic guitar solo. So there'll be two more episodes. Let's listen to what we have as it stands. It's getting harder every day. Turn it up.
And then the second part. I've never needed you to see. Let's go roll, John and me. It seems the more I try, the more I fail. I feel a black fog encroach. Coming together well. I'm very, very happy with it. I think the chorus does have an uplift compared to the verses, and I was very happy with the verses last week. So this song is coming together very nicely. I still have a lot of things to work out in the song, as far as I think it probably requires quite a steady, slow burner build up intro, maybe, into some kind of riff that we can use as a segue for the rest of the parts of the song. So we'll work on that next week. Then the week after, we'll do the guitar solo. So fingers crossed that it all works out because I think this is definitely something special, this song. I'm really, really enjoying working on it. Thank you so much, guys, for following this wee journey. It means a lot to me that people are starting to take an interest in it. It's class. I really hope it inspires you guys to try other things in your songwriting and work out how you can branch out and take inspiration from other things and take ideas for your songwriting in other directions. So I hope you're finding this useful and interesting and informative. Please like and subscribe if you're new to the channel. And please do all the things that help the channel to grow. It means a lot to me. Let me know how I'm getting on in the comments. And if you've got any ideas or suggestions, I'd love to hear them. Thank you so much, guys. You guys rock. Yeah.